Chance asked me to do something, to do a little presentation on utilizing your hay forages. Um, just a little background that your, your hay is probably one of your biggest expenses on the ground, on your place. Um, represents a significant portion of the diet for, uh, for everything, horses, cattle, sheep. Uh, especially, and then when we feed it in the winter time, um, waste can, can occur both, both during storage and feeding. Uh, can ex exceed up to $3 billion annually and accounts for 10% uh, of your loss. You have a little more, you have a little less concern if it's stored inside. Um, losses can rise, uh, in, can increase rapidly up to 20% or more um, if, it's stored, if it's stored outside. Round bales, especially round bales, as we can typically tend to see with, with grass hay, some alfalfa. Um, not typically in this county, but in other counties, uh, round bales, if they're stored outside, can eat can uh, result in even more, up to at least 50 to 60% of that, that bale when you have to first do it. So plants uh, kind of results from plant respiration, microbial activity, and weather. Weather is a big thing uh, with the loss of your with your loss of your hay product. Uh, the older it is, the more dry matter value or the protein level that it that it loses. Uh, so that's why we typically want to uh, try to feed that stuff as soon as we can. Um, we tend to see more. 20% seems to be the magical line. Um, if you get, if you have higher, higher moisture content, you tend to see a, a higher mold growth in that. Your stacks tend to get a little hotter, um, as well as so when you open it up, we tend to see a little more uh, chance at air getting in there and creating creating fire. The weather also tends to leach out those nutrients, so that's when we're baling it, that's why we add an additive to it to kind of help preserve some of those nutrients for storage throughout the year. Um, so if you, just the, this is just a switch from small squares to large rounds. Um, we tend to see a higher storage loss with large round bales than we do large squares. Um, you tend to see, you tend to be all right with that because you can usually store them inside or uh, do some other do some other things related to that with carving and covering on that. Um, with large rounds, you, we, we typically store them outside. Um, don't cover them there as much as we typically do with the, with the small squares or the big squares. Um, feeding losses tend to be really high with, with rounds because you throw them out there and you cattle stomp on them, livestock stomp on them, defecate, urinate on them. Um, so that, that, that loses that value as well. Um, as well as in we're feeding, we typically feed out on the ground versus if you grind your hay, you're usually putting that in a bump, and so you tend to keep all that together better and be more efficient with that for your livestock if you grind it and feed it in some sort of uh, containerized bump. The longer it's exposed the, to more favorable, unfavorable conditions, the greater the loss of the nutrients that you have in there. So the older the hay, um, what not, you are probably feeding, if you, if your grass hay value, you know, if your grass hay tests at about 10, 12% protein, one year, you know, probably one year, you're probably down to eight, six, eight percent that next year with that, just because of the, the weather conditions and the age of the hay. And this year is going to be very important to utilizing all your hay resources. Because why, what are we seeing with hay prices right now? Up and up and up and up. So let's. You, so this is just another way of of utilizing, telling you, utilizing what we have available to us. So hay is expensive. 100, 180. What do you guys? What, 
I've been here in 150 to 200, depending on the quality of the hay. Right now, uh, two or three years ago, the same quality hay was running $100 a ton. So uh, Mother Nature's played a big key in the, in the value of that right now. Uh, we're pretty dry. Hopefully we get some spring rains to, to help bring our hay fields back so we can have some hay. Um, otherwise, it's going to get a lot worse. It requires labor to make it and to feed it. Um, 50% of it's wasted either by poor storage methods. So when we stack our hay, stack our round, round bales, what do we do? Either we stack them on the end and then out on the ground, stack them on the end with the bale sitting on top of them, or we stack them in the three row pyramid type style, and then we're losing all, we're still losing some value to that on our, on, on our round bales. With square bales, we have the, the outer edges are usually ones that tend to see the greatest weathering with the greatest loss in nutrients um, just because of weather and atmosphere that we have with us. Um, as well as improper feeding practices. Like, like we talked about when we go and feed our round bales, what do we do? We just blow them out on the ground and cows have at it, right? So there's truly no, I mean there's a couple other ways of doing it, but that's that's the most that's the cheapest way to feed it versus going out and having, having um, round bale feeders for all of our livestock. It's hard to feed, hard to put, if you have a bunch of cows, it's hard to put out 20 feeders and take 20 hays, 20 bales out and put them each individually into those, into those uh, feeders on a big pasture. Whereas it's more efficient and easier for us, we only have to feed one person by just rolling it out on the ground and, and letting Mother Nature as well as our livestock feed it that way. We tend to see, uh, I'll get to it here in a little bit, but we tend to see a greater, uh, greater reduction in feed costs and storage losses uh, when we feed in bunks or, 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 or round belt feeders. With big squares, what do we typically tend to do? I know I did it as a kid. We flake it off, and then we're still getting into that aspect of stomach uh, uh, cattle using that as bedding or other or other type. So what we want to do is make sure that our storage, uh, if we want to keep our keep our hay, our new hay. Uh, Good the nutrients and whatnot. We want to make sure that the roof is watertight. Uh, make it animal proof. When I grew up as a kid, we always had elk. Deer and elk always got into our haystacks, and we're still seeing that down in Laramie or wherever. We're seeing a lot of wildlife damage to that. But what about the rodents, mice, and rats, and other animals that utilize that? They still get into those those haystacks and create some damage to those bales. So we need to make sure that we keep it animal proof. Use our older hay first because we typically start feeding earlier in the year, October, November, when we're bringing those, those cattle off of, of pastures and whatnot. There's still nutrients in the grass pasture so we can utilize that old hay to, comp to help compensate for some of that. Or if you have to have an old open winter like this, we can still use that and still have some other resources available to those livestock. Protein blocks, things like that as well. Uh, stack your hay on pallets, especially if we're inside. Stack them, I do it at home. Of course, I don't have a big pack, big lot of stuff, but I stack all my hay on pallets. Pallets are basically free or cheap. What, what, what does that do for us? That gets it up off the ground. So if in the spring, when we get a lot of water runoff, snow melt, or whatnot, we're not losing that bottom inch or two or three inches of hay to mold. We're getting it up off the ground. We're, not, we're keeping that value of that hay, the protein value of that hay, or nutrient value of that hay, at a higher level versus it being in contact 
the soil. And try and store it inside. If not, try and tarp it or cover it some way so that we keep that nutrient, keep Mother Nature from leaching out all those nutrients that we have in that stack, in that, in that product that we spent millions of dollars or thousands of dollars trying to produce in the spring and the summer, spring and summertime. Okay, how much do you guys use? What's your, just a general average on what you guys try to do for, for hanging in the summertime? Because I know you guys have a feedlot out there, so just a rough value for your summertime expenses on hanging. So per so per bale you're probably looking at probably fifteen twenty dollars more or more thirty five dollars per bale just an expense to to keep that if you don't tarp it or store it inside in six months that value goes down because you have to feed more to get to that that same level. So there's a couple different ways of doing it. Outside, like we talked about, outside storage or, or storing inside. Storing inside, we, you reduce, if you can reduce the soil moisture contact or the soil contact, um, you reduce your outdoor precipitation, which leaches out all those nutrients. Um, spoilage, you have less spoilage, as we call it, caramelization. Um, cows always like it for some reason, um, but you still have to feed more to get that same to get that same aspect, uh, as well as you increase your hay nutritional value. You keep that nutritional value in that in that bale. Uh, some disadvantages of storing inside: you have to have lots of buildings if you if you store it inside. Uh, and you increase your accident your accidental incidence of bales falling on you, especially in large squares if they're not. Or small squares if they're not set in there just right. Uh, damage to barns if they put pressure on those side walls you just have those that annual upkeep of your buildings that you have to do deal with. This is your probably the way we most store our hay is outside. Um, you, you don't have to worry about storage buildings because you have increased storage space Less wildlife interference, why? Because we typically fence it off to where we keep the wildlife, deer, or wildlife out of there. Um, some of the disadvantages, like we talked about, increased moisture and spoilage on that. Um, you lose that to your nutritional, you lose that nutritional value, as well as you have a greater heat exposure because you're condensing those bales in there. And then once you open it up to air, have a greater chance at fail at stack fires. Um, if you storm on pallets or gravel, you decrease your, more, your, more, your ground moisture spoilage because it wicks it away, it takes it away, you're lifting it up off the ground and being there. Um, try and tarp or cover it. Uh, run your, run your, your rows north to south and at least three feet between rows. Allows for some of that moisture to come off to wick away, um, as well as if you run it north to south, if you're gonna get a lot of snow, it tends to dry it out a little faster. You can retain some of that nutritional value in there. Yeah, vegetation stacks before outside. What's that? Vegetation stacks before outside. Um, uh, the reason uh, the the publication I was going off of is that um, mainly mainly because how people stack them. So if you, so like round bales, you still have, have that, you're just trying to keep as much nutritional value in that bale as much as possible. And so, um, it just depends. Um, how we package it, no matter how we package it, if you waste it, you lose your money. Uh, below, uh, so we try and feed. So try and feed in small amounts, twice a day. 
That way the cattle, can, the livestock can come in, feed a little bit, get their fill, and then come back that night and feed a little bit more. Always kind of keep them a little hungry so they utilize it a lot better. Or feed them in bumps um, or well-drained areas. Try and store, try and feed your store outside stored hay first because of the nutri less nu nutritional value that's in that bale versus the stuff that stays inside. Um, recent analysis shows that hay costs between two to seven cents per pound of dry matter. So that's a, this is one of the reasons why we want to try and utilize um, utilize our hay as best as we possibly can. Uh, so a lot of this research here is through Texas Tech. Nine percent of the loss if we feed in a round bale feeder, as compared to thirty-one percent loss without a feeder. Um, two percent if we if we uh, that's with an alfalfa bale with grass is two percent compared to thirty eight percent blowing away compaction being utilized as bedding cattle and the like don't like to bed on alfalfa near as much as grass hay so typically uh, trampling leaf shatter. Uh, chemical and physical de deterioration of the hay, fecal contamination, is ju and just pure refusal, especially on super old hay. Um, we just have to feed more because there's not a lot of nutrient value to that. Feeding losses can range from 2 to 60 percent when no care is used, um, or typically on a, on a hay producing place. Three to three to six percent is is acceptable for um, for those losses. Once again, as we all know, hay should be matched to our animal needs. Um, if we depends on what stage our livestock are in, if we're just feeding yearlings, we can probably get away with some older, less nutritional type type of grass, hay, whereas if we have third trimester about to calve cows, we're going to have a little bit more increase in nutritional value, and then when they start calving, we want to up that value as much as, it, not as much as we can, but have that value high, because those cattle are producing milk, or those mamas are producing milk for the babies. Same, and that's across the board with any livestock. Um, hay should be stored at uh, hay that's stored outside should be fed first before hay that's stored inside. Of course, coarse hay uh, stored outside should be fed. Your coarse hay should be fed before fun um, stem stuff. Minimizing the amount of hay to which, like we talked about, if we feed it multiple times throughout the day, yes, it's a little bit higher expense for us, but it is being more efficient and you're feeding, actually feeding less at that point in time. As well as you're forcing up the animal, forcing the animals to uh, clean that up, and can help reduce that hay loss there. So um, that's what I have. So any questions? I'll try to get a better answer for you. On large square, there's probably, yeah, you know, because what happens is like what you were talking about that water gets in those cracks, and then the more surface area that you have available for Mother Nature, moisture, sunlight, and all that stuff to get in there, it just deteriorates it that much faster. So, by doing what you were, what you did, I think is probably the best option in terms of storing it outside of, outside of tarping it, and that's just another added expense um, if you don't want it. Right. 